So I would be remiss in not honoring uh, Terence McKenna, who many of you probably know, who died recently. Um, and Terence and I became very good friends the last four or five years of his life. One of the reasons why Terence and I became very good friends, he started making fun of himself. You know, I enjoy that. If you don't have a, a sense of self-humor, self-criticism, then I think that's, that's a real problem. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. And, and Terence um, has come out with some really astonishing concepts and ideas about the interstellar transportation of germplasm of fungi th throughout space. Well, that was absolutely scientific heresy 15, 20 years ago. But most of you are probably are well aware that this theory is getting more and more substantiated that endospores of bacteria and fungi may well be able to survive interstellar space travel. And perhaps this planet was seeded with endospores of bacteria and fungi long ago and was, in a sense, inoculated. And I suspect that the fungi are throughout the cosmos. Wherever there is water, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, you're going to end up with linear chains of self-replicating self matter running through mitosis, you know, it projects mycelial networks and evolve into fungi. I think fungi are as, if you have matter, you're going to have fungi. You know, that's my belief. I think Terence was really on the right track in so many ways. Several books were being produced. If we have Focus again, um, that were being produced at this time. And um, probably the, one of the worst books was this one and this one. Um, this book here said you could take metal, which is a, a chemical agent used in photography. You could put it on the mushrooms, they turn blue, then the, the mushrooms were active. Absolutely not true. A lot of misinformation came out. Um, and then a number of other books, kind of a second generation of books came out that were much, much better. Uh, this is Stephen Pollock's book. This is my first one. Jonathan Ott's first book. Terrence McKenna and Dennis McKenna wrote the Psilocybin Magic Mushroom Growers Guide, which really started a revolution here in the Bay Area. I call it the Psilocybin Cubensis Scholarship Fund, you know? Because <laughs> many, many people have come up to me, you know, after I've said that about the Slosby uh, Cubensis Scholarship Fund saying, yeah, I was one of those people, you know, who grew a little bit of Cubensis in their closet. You know, they never made it much money, but they paid tuition, they paid their rent. They were law-abiding citizens otherwise. But uh, um, this is Slosby Cubensis. This is the most, uh, the most prominently well-known psilocybin active mushroom in the world. This is the one that Terrence and Dennis um, went down to the Amazon. Uh, they ate these mushrooms. Uh, they uh, had these visions of flying saucers coming from outer space and this invisible world all around them. And um, they then pioneered using uh, work from San Antonio, which is a uh, mycologist growing button mushrooms, uh, using a case grain technique of growing this mushroom mycelium on, on rye grain and then um, and putting soil on top and growing it. Very easy mushrooms to grow, very prevalent, very common in southeastern United States. It also circumnavigates the the equatorial region uh, of the planet. So it's in Thailand, it's in Central America, it's in the Philippines, you know, it's in India, it's, it's all over the world.